Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to create multiple filters for galleries in Power Apps. We will focus on filtering based on dates, date ranges, set default values for filters, and also combine it with other filters, and all of these using simple formulas in PowerFX. So let's check it out in action. I have a power app wherein I have a gallery that is connected to a very simple SharePoint list. This list tracks sales discount requests. I have the customer names, the products for which they are requesting a discount, the discount percent, and the date at which this discount is effective. Now, effective date is a key metadata that I would like to provide filters on, which allows the user to refine the results in the gallery based upon the date range selected. Currently, the gallery is showcasing all the data. If I was to pick a start date, let's say the 1st of August, the gallery will filter the data to show all the items where the effective date is from the 1st of August onwards. If I also provide an end date to this, let's say 15th of August, the gallery gets filtered to list out the items where the effective date is in this date range. If I reset, the gallery showcases all the data from my list. If I simply pick the end date, 1st of August, the gallery now showcases all the data where the effective date is 1st of August or anything less than that. And in case I pick a start date that is greater than the end date, I receive an error that start date cannot be greater than end date. Along with the date range filters, I can also add other filters to my gallery. For example, the product. So let's build this from scratch. I am in the studio experience for the Power App. I have a gallery. The items property is connected to my SharePoint list that is connected in my Power App. That's my sales discount requests list. I will be using the modern controls in Power Apps to allow the user to filter the data in the gallery. So I'll add a couple of text controls. I have named the text as start date and end date. And I will add a couple of date picker controls. For the start date control, I will rename it to DP start date. And for the end date control, I will rename it to DP end date, following good naming standards. Now to apply that filter logic for the items property of the gallery, I will use the filter function to filter my list. I'll use the AND function. My date column in SharePoint is called effective date. So effective date should be greater than or equal to the date picker control dp start date dot value. I'll put a comma. My second condition for AND function will be effective date is less than or equal to dp end date dot value. I'll close the and condition. I'll close the filter condition. I'll click format text. Now this formula assumes that we will always have values for start date and end date, which may or may not be the case. 
So to handle scenarios where they could be blank, for the first condition, I will use an or function. And here, I will use the function is blank to check the date picker dp start date has a value. Comma, the actual condition itself, and I'll close the or function. And I will do something very similar for effective date less than or equal to the end date. Or is blank dp end date dot value, comma, that's the second expression. Now I'll click format text, and that completes my formula. Let's preview the app. Let's pick a start date. August 10th. The gallery shows all the data from August 10th onwards. Now let's pick an end date of August 18th. Now the gallery will show me the data based on that date range. I would like to reset these filters and test other scenarios. So for that, I will insert a button text for the button, I'll call it reset. And on select of this button, I will use the reset function to reset dp start date and reset dp end date. Those are my two date picker controls. Let's preview the app. Click reset. The date picker controls are reset to blank. The gallery shows all the data. Now let's pick an end date. I'll pick the end date as July 25th. So this should show me all the items that have an effective date until July 25th. And if I click reset, the gallery shows all the data. We can also provide certain default values. For example, the date picker control for start date its value property is blank. I will set this to today. So now it's showing all the items where the effective date is today or greater. And if I want to box this in a specific date range, I can do that. August 16th. And this time, if I click reset, start date will always hold that default value, which is today's date. If you want to give a default value for the end date as well, let's try that. For the value property of this date picker, for a date range of one month, I will use the function date add today's date. Let's add one month. And you can define this unit in days, months, quarters. In this scenario, I'll pick one month. If I preview, notice it begins with the date range for one month. I can change this. Let's say start from 4th of July up until the 3rd of September. And if I click reset, if you want scenarios where you want to force the date range to always be a month, so end date, date add, instead of today, I will say, dp start date dot value. And if you don't want the user to change the end date, it should purely be dependent upon the start date. For the display mode property, I will change the display mode of this control to disabled. So we can see that I cannot change the end date. But as I change the start date, let's say August 16th, this will give me a one month range. And if the start date itself has a value empty, the end date will also be empty. So at that point, it will show me all the items. I've changed the display mode of the end date back to edit. If you want to add other filters for your gallery and you want it to work along with the date filters, so let's add one for product. Now product in my 
SharePoint list is a choice column with the following three choices. So here I will use a drop down control. I will rename this drop down control to DRP product. For the items property, I will use the function choices. My SharePoint list dot my column product which will list out all the choice values. And for the modern drop down control, there is a property called fields. I will edit, add field and pick value. So now if I preview the app, product will list out all the choices from my product choice column. So the user can select any product. The reset button, I will add one more reset action here to reset my product drop down. So if the user clicks reset, product gets reset to empty. And to add this filter to my gallery, in the AND function, once again, I'll use OR, similar technique, is blank, DRP product dot selected dot value comma my column in SharePoint is called product it's a choice column so product dot value is equal to drp product dot selected dot value close the or function I'll click format text and that's my completed formula all my three filters will work in a logical and function Let's try it out. I'll pick product A. So it gives me results only for product A. I'll pick my start date as the 1st of August. My end date was setting accordingly. That was the default value. And we can see the result in action. I'll simply add a label control here. The text property would be start date cannot be greater than end date. And this control should be visible if the start date picker value is greater than the end date picker value. So what I will do here is I'll add an AND condition. In this, I'll add an OR condition. Is blank DP start date dot value. Is blank DP end date dot value. That completes the OR condition. Put a comma, close the AND condition. The result of OR, I will put it in a NOT condition, meaning both of these dates need to have a value in order for this evaluation to take place. So let's try it now. I'll pick a start date, 17th of August, end date, 31st. Filters my data. I'll pick the end date. As the first, the start date is greater than the end date. And I can see the label is giving me that specific message. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.